could could I um, could I ask ask a question? How many people actually in I guess particular people growing up in China actually read the full version, the full multi-volume version, and at what age do they commonly read it? Uh, excuse me, I, I think I lost your voice. Can you repeat, Ralph? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, of people, I guess, particularly people of Chinese uh, background, uh, how many people actually read the full multi-volume story, and at what age do they commonly read it? And do they read it? Do most? Do a lot of people read it more than once? I just have to say, very few, very few. <laughs> I just have to say, very few. And uh, uh, and uh, one thing, one thing called uh, I think one famous one called the uh, uh, Red Chamber Dream. And uh, they, I've been reading many times. I'm an engineering major. And uh, one day in school, I talked to the people in the literature, Chinese literature major, and uh, they are taking a class of the Red Chamber Dream. And I was shocked. Uh, a lot of students even not reading the real book. They just read the summary from the professor, you know, blah, 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 blah. So they probably know more than I did, okay? But they didn't really read the word by word. And I'm the person because I enjoy it. So I read the words by words and many times. So I find out it's quite enjoyable. And then I also feel it has a lot of philosophical, cultural, uh, uh, ethical, religious meaning in the book. So I think that I would like to introduce uh, this book to the uh, to people. And I, I hope this one is not the last, the last time I introduced. I hope I can have a chance to introduce, introduce many, many times. That's I'm okay. And then uh, just give you one minute. Let me start my screen. Okay. So, uh, so right now, uh, sorry, because this month looks like everybody has become busier and then uh, I have, have to cancel two meetings last two weeks and the this, this week I have to change the subject. And the next week, if you see that I change the, uh, 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 I, I cancel next week's meeting. I change, I postpone to the week after. So next week has no meeting, and uh, uh, October 15, uh, I'm going to back to the book. I constantly follow the book uh, from the, uh, uh, this book, the uh, Feng Yulan's Short History of the Chinese Philosophy, and I'm going to continue on the Confucianism uh, on, in the Tang Dynasty. And this one is important. How does this relate it to uh, uh, journey to the West. Okay, let's put it this way. Okay, we I think last time we talked about Xuan Zhang, and then he bring the uh, Buddhism to China, and then uh, next next week I mean two weeks from now we are going to talk about Confucianism. So Confucianism will start to change during the Tang Dynasty. So for the next thousand years, the Confucianism will be different than before. So we have been introduced Confucianism for many, many times. And if it's before Tang Dynasty, it will be, I would not say the uh, teaching is different, but I would say the result is different. So by reading this, this book, Journey to the West, you probably would get a better idea what's the impact of the Confucianism, okay? After thousand years, okay, after Tang Dynasty. So we will take a like, forward looking, see what's going on, uh, this book, this novel, and then, uh, then we, will be, we will be able to see, you know, uh, the, uh, two weeks from now, when we start to read the uh, Confucianism in Tang Dynasty, and then yeah. we are going to yeah. go over to the Song Dynasty, the near Confucianism. Then you will see, you know, uh, what's the chance going on yeah, for these years, yeah. for these southern years, not just a few years. So um, let me see, I'm going to okay, just move on. So, okay, so here's today we have uh, basically I separate this one to four uh, 
different sector. Okay, first we talk about the history, the real Xuanzang. Okay, we just we talk about uh, uh, this one last time, but I think it would better give a quick introduce about the Xuanzang in case you don't know, or if I can refresh your memory, then you can compare the uh, novel. Okay, about the Xuanzang. So before we start, and then uh, I will ask anyone, uh, let, let's have a Kyle first. Kyle, are you able to talk now? Kyle, you just walked away? Okay. <laughs> okay, so anybody listen to the uh, podcast or anybody have read this one, what give it like, you know, some, uh, quick, uh, 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 how do you feel or how, what, what do you want to know or what do you expect here? Yeah, you, you can raise your hand if you have something you want to talk about. Either you listen to the one, just brief, about one minute, less than one minute. Anybody want to talk about your experience on this book? Yeah, I will. Uh, Nick? Yeah, please. Who, who is speaking? Uh, Nick Palmer. Okay, please. Uh, well, uh, yes. Well, I was interested to the story. Uh, the book I was interested, I, I was introduced to, I'm a martial artist. So, you know, I was kind of, I was very inspired by Bruce Lee as a young kid. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and then, so it just so happened I got into Chinese Kung Fu, which was a Buddhist, you know, from the Shaolin Temple, which is a Buddhist, you know, uh, martial art. And of course, the Journey to the West is a Buddhist uh, tale. And so uh, I had a friend who um, introduced me to the book at 19, although I had started Kung Fu at 13. And actually, I actually is familiar with the Chinese Monkey King at the age of eight. I saw a, a cartoon that was published, you know, here in the United States at that time, just remembering the, the, the but anyway, the book was uh, basically into the West about the story of uh, Peter Pitaka. You know, going going from China to India, which is the West, to fetch the sutras for for, for the for Buddha, and to bring it back to China, because at that time China was at a, a very much like today's world. You know, a lot of uh, uh, things happening, uh, murders and wars and stuff like that. So the, he was uh, asked by Buddha to fetch scriptures in India, and uh, along the way. Uh, in order to repent, Bu uh, the monkey king was imprisoned under the mountain of five elements by Buddha. That, I, that, um, yeah. And uh, in order to repent, he had to help Tripitaka along the way. Uh, along Dave with and Kwame, hey, can you please put your hand down? Uh, with, along with Pixie and, uh, and Sandy, um, they, they were they hit, uh, the, the monk's bodyguards to uh, India. And, uh, and of course, they, they had to... Um, you know, they had, to, they had all these challenges, I think 72 or something like that. Yeah. Um, there's actually two parts to that story. Of course, the, 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 the Monkey King himself, and you can probably tell that better than I can. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, we will talk about the story. Just uh, please tell us how do you think about this? Uh, how do you feel this uh, or what do you expect to know today? Okay, I thank you, Nick. Thank you very much. And I probably believe a lot of people will see this one uh, initiated as like a kung fu story uh, because of the monkey kid. Uh, we have a uh, uh, hey, Jason. Yeah. Jason, uh, actually, Dave was next, but a troll asked him to put his hand down. I've got okay, right okay. yeah, Dave, please. Dave. Dave. Dave is next. Yeah, yeah, thanks, <clears throat> Jason. And so this novel relates back to the month we studied. Was that three weeks ago? That journeyed uh, walking across the Gobi Desert, little things like that. Yes. To me. That was a fantastic story, and it seemed to me the novel, they tried to make it even more fantastic, and <laughs> I watched the first couple minutes of the movie and discovered it was all in Chinese, so I gave up. You talk about movie of the journey to the West? Well, I, I did listen to the uh, podcast the podcast as well, okay. but the movie with the, the monks flying through the air, I said, well, that's we're trying to make it exceptional as we can, but <laughs> But the fact they said a hundred chapters and the chapters were kind of serialized, you know, this this chapter is about me and the dragon. This chapter is, a, you know, the monkey does that. And to me, it reminded me of the serial TV shows. Uh, the Lone Ranger was one we had growing up, but every week he'd have a different adventure. 
And so it sounded like these, the serial, uh, the chapters had not much to do with the journey, but just making exciting stories. But uh, yeah, okay. And, yeah. And the comment is the Silk Road went to the Gobi Desert. I, you know, I would think I would find a different, a better route. But say, you know, 90% of the people that go that way die. And, but talked about how much trade China had, but then we're building a wall to keep out the Mongolians. But anyway, thanks. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and then I think when we talk about Romance of Three Kingdom, we talk about it's like 70% uh, history, 30% um, fiction. And this one, I have to say 1% one per one history, 99% fiction. So uh, totally not true, okay? Only the name, uh, Chupicata is true. So the rest are all not true, okay? But uh, Mandarin, please. Yes, um, hang on one second. Um, I really enjoyed the podcast, Jason. Uh, I thought it was an excellent selection. I especially liked uh, the very end where they had those bonus minutes things. Uh, when the woman was talking about uh, the constraints on the monkey king, on the monkey, um, that he had the band around his head, that it was about freedom and restraint. But then she went on to say, she talked about the sizes of his steps, how he could expand and contract them. And that whole theme of both things made me think of, I think it was Autumn Floods, the stories about the birds mm -hmm. and the birds of the different sizes. And uh, so I could see that the, um, I could see that the same themes were coming up and especially when she was talking about um, the Taoism and the uh, circulation of the breath and um, how that could be seen as mapping onto the kingdom of the land. I thought that was also very, uh, not the kingdom, but the travels, the mountains and the rivers could be the veins and the sort of energy centers. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very beautiful and, and a very good way of looking at the work. Okay, thank you. I am. And then uh, this book was written in the 16th century. And during that time, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Chinese already know they have an outside world. And then the, a lot of things are very mature during that time. So uh, just like a podcast they're talking about, they see everything in one system. Okay, so when you, you achieve traveling in your body, it will be the same as your mind thinking the world the same as the monk travel around the world and so everything is organic you know unity so that that's what i get you know uh, and another another reason when we read this one it's not just a child book it's a a lot of things you can find out what's the world in the 16th century chinese and probably <clears throat> even today still carry a lot of this kind of thinking, even the person haven't read uh, the, uh, the, the journey to the uh, West. So uh, I think that's start, okay, going to the uh, real history of the, uh, this one. So <clears throat> first, let's talk about the real history. So basically you can see, uh, we, I show this one for many times, and basically, you can see. Uh, Nick, you has hands up. Oh, uh, I, I took okay. I, I, I can. Um, I should put it down. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, so I can find Juan, you want to say something? Okay. What do you want to wait? Uh, yep. Juan. Uh, no, no, I, I would let you start first. Okay, uh, all right, okay. We have a chance to discuss, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so I have shown this one and right now we are in the, we talk about the book is uh, uh, the Xuanzang, the monk. Actually, the actual story happened in around 630, 
okay, in the Tang Dynasty, that's the peak of the Chinese culture and the military power. And that's the real story. And then the book is written a thousand years later in the middle or later Ming Dynasty. Uh, even Ming Dynasty is not such a strong, powerful nation, but personal, I believe Ming Dynasty is very advanced society in the uh, citizen, in the uh, 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 civil society, because it's really a capitalism system during that time. And so uh, just like the podcast they're talking about, during that time, a lot of printing, they have a cheap book and the people start to have uh, entertainment. So we can, one thing we need to set is the book is written a thousand years after the actual story. Okay, so we can. So let's go over some uh, simple, this kind of the review, if you haven't attended the last section, but I will quickly do that one and I don't have intent to go all the detail. I just want to remind everyone about the <coughs> story. And during that time, uh, the emperor is Tang Taizong and his real name is Li Shimin. And he was two years older than Xuanzang, the monk. And then at the 626, okay, and they have the Xuanwu Gate incident, which is a uh, coup, uh, which killed his uh, two brothers and forced his father to uh, uh, obfuscate uh, the throne to him. And then uh, 627, Xuanzang started his trip to India. Okay, I, I like to mention it's illegally, okay, unlike the, uh, the, the novels. At that time, uh, the emperor had a prohibition of immigration, so people cannot leave the country. But Xuanzang already made his mind to travel to India to get the sutra, the Buddhism sutra. That's why, you know, he break the law and the travel to India. And actually, he all, he spent the night, somebody said 17, somebody said 19, but really depend how you count, okay? So around 20 years, he came back from uh, when Xuanzang was uh, almost 50 years old, he went back from India. And then uh, uh, Tang Taizong, the Taizong, uh, Emperor Taizong of Tang forgive him and then uh, uh, received him in the royal court. And Xuanzang started to do his translation and then for the rest of his life. So uh, then we can talk about the Xuanzang's life, right? Xuanzang was born at 600 CE around in the Sui Dynasty. And he was born as a, a Chen Wei, that's his last name, Chen. And then he was received the Confucius uh, education. And at 10 years old, when his father died, he uh, stayed in the temple with his older brother. And his brother, his brother is a monk. And then when he was 28 years old, 27 years old, he already a famous uh, monk uh, specialized in a special school called Yogacara. And then because of the translation, he think he need to go to India to get the sutra and get truly understand uh, the, uh, the, the, the teaching. So, when he was 28 years old, he left the border of Tang and illegally. Okay, so he started to travel. And then here he traveled in the uh, place uh, called, uh, actually the place is today's Uzbekistan, Uzbek, right? That place. And he met a person called uh, uh, Vendak. And Vendak could be the prototype of the Sun Wukong, the monkey kid, because he, we consider him as foreigner and then uh, barbarian and then gradually change uncultural, but he is helping uh, the uh, Xuanzang and the later on become the prototype of mm -hmm. monkey kid or the Sun Wukong, that, that, that's one thing. And then uh, later on he stay, uh, 14 years, that's important, he stayed 14 years in India. So actually his trip only take on the Silk Road, only take about two years. And he stayed 14 years in India. And the Xuanzang is pretty good in uh, 
Sanskrit. So he become a lecturer, professor over there and teach. Uh, and then visit the uh, master of yoga Kara. His name is Siddhabhadra. Uh, Siddhabhadra is the famous uh, master of yoga, uh, yoga Kara. So he stays in Nalanda school, become a teacher. And then he also travel around India to visit a uh, different place. He also lecture in Nalanda later on when he turned 50, uh, uh, stay 14 years, he uh, decided to go back to China. So he take about one or two years and uh, travel back to China and back to Chang'an and uh, the Taizong of Tang received him and uh, then he start to do his translation. So last time when we introduced uh, Xuan Zhang, basically we are based on his writing on the treaty uh, on the uh, his Xuanzang, he's writing about the his uh, he's writing his uh, book on or this book, Great Tang uh, Record on the Western Region, okay, which is like Nation Geographic uh, without picture. That's the book he is writing uh, about different. I think we we show the uh, writing. He just shows uh, different place, different religion. And after he passed away, his disciple Hui Li write the great biography of Ci'en Temple, Chipitaka. Okay, that's his uh, story. Okay, so this one, all real history story in the historical account, and which will be totally different than the uh, journey to the West. That's why, you know, up to now, I'm going to. to and all this one uh, we consider historical account. Okay. So before I move on to the uh, the novel, okay, I will pause for a few uh, minutes. If you have a question, Rika, or you something you want to talk about the real Xuanzang, not the story, not the story, the real historical Xuanzang. If you have a question or something you want to comment, so before we, move, yeah, you can uh, raise your hand if you want to say something. Digital hand or does it? Uh, Nicola, you want to say something? Yeah, I, actually, I do, uh, Professor. Um, I was interested in, uh, you know, like uh, 10 years ago, I had the opportunity to, to go yeah. to China and I ended up uh, taking a month and traveling the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. So I actually traveled, uh, you know, as far as Kaspar, I went to Turpan, Duong, Duong and, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, those, the, the, same, the same path as the the monk Tripitaka took. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I thought it was very cool uh, to be actually uh, do that. Along the way, they had a lot of stuff about the monkey king, though, as well. But okay. yeah, that was at the too. Okay, so uh, now that's a great experience. I, 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 I hope I have the chance to do that. You know, that that's wonderful. And uh, when I have a chance to do, it, I probably want to ask you. you know? So thank you so much. Well, yeah. Uh, any other comment, question, uh, you, or anything you want to talk about this one before I move on? Okay, so look guys, we are more interested in the story than the history. So let's talk about the, uh, uh, this um, novel. Uh, let's talk about this novel, okay? Uh, basics, this novel, I will, if I, if I have to put a few words on that, I will say in this novel, you can understand the uh, Confucianism, religious Taoism, and the Buddhism. Okay. And the understanding, my opinion, is not about the book or the sutra or uh, uh, Confucius Anodect you are reading or the Taoism book or Buddhism sutra you are reading. It's about how these three things being viewed by 16th century Chinese. So the Confucianism during that time, it's already developed a thousand years from Tang Dynasty. That's a new Confucianism, okay? Has been developed for a thousand years. Same as the Buddhism, okay? It's been popular in China for a thousand years. And the same as religious Taoism or being popular in Chinese over a thousand years being practiced. So, in for a thousand years, it's very well, we can say it's very mature religion, society, system, okay? And then 
from this book, we can see how does these three teaching in view or practice in uh, 16th century Chinese, and which pop, in my opinion, not much difference than today's situation. Yeah, I see that too, because yeah, reading the book. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Jay, Jason, you're freezing. I don't know if you can hear us. Jason? Or is it me? No, you're Jay? like. No, no, you're, you're okay. Jason's Jason. freezing. Jason's Jason. freezing. Yeah, Jason's freezing. Okay, it's bye. Okay. We lost you, Jason. Yes. Uh, you were frozen for maybe 30 seconds. Uh, okay, Jason. so how about right now? Uh, it's perfect now. Okay, okay. So let me know, you know, please let me know if I'm frozen. I find out the internet is a little bit unstable, you know, today is a little bit weird. So, okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so uh, please let me know if I'm frozen or something, just wave your hand. Okay. So, uh, so <clears throat> the traditional we talk about, we have the four uh, classic uh, in, uh, Chinese class book, okay, classic book, Romans of Three Kingdoms, the Water Margin, and uh, a Journey to the West, and the Red Chamber Dream. Okay, so in my view, you know, I love all this book, and in, in my view, the Romans of the Three Kingdoms, we introduced about two, Two months ago, okay, and basically show the Chinese historical view. And the basics is we talk about the teaching, probably teach you about Confucian and Confucian uh, uh, virtues, okay. And uh, uh, the water margin, I think it, talk, it talk about hero, heroism or individualism, individual hero, okay, this kind of concept, okay. And the journey to the West basically is deal with the uh, human psychology a lot, okay? And uh, deal with religion or you, uh, the, during the time, okay, uh, what's going on, okay? And the Red Chamber Dream is more, I, my personal view is more like a koan, okay? Which tell you the secular world and the religious world, how does people react during these conflicts, the secular world and the religious life. Okay, so uh, that's my opinion. And uh, again, uh, a lot of people like this one or golden vase is pornography. And I see this one is a description of the Chinese capitalism, okay? Without virtue, okay? Without any virtue, uh, without any morality, how do you live in this society? So I think this one is an interesting book and uh, then uh, hope we day, one day we will introduce this book. And the, about the author, okay, and Wu Cheng En, okay, we don't know much about him, but, and probably not that important because the story probably has been uh, uh, flowing around for over hundred years because this is a right, the actually, the actual historical account has been a thousand years ago. So people probably start to talk about the story and people start to make up some funny story or fantasy for this one. So Wu Cheng En could be the person just compile everything together and put everything in writing. And just like the podcast talk about Wu Cheng En could be a very over-educated writer and underemployed person, right? So because the in the Ming Dynasty, the royal civil exam is very important. Uh, as a, 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 a learned person, only job is pass the exam and get a government position. He probably read, study, but not doing well in the test. So he had to make money. And since the printing technique in during that time is very well. So, he probably compiled a story, print the book to make money, and then, so, okay, that could be the story. So uh, that's about uh, this book. And when I want to 
I think during the many years, people ask me about this story. Uh, either most are American, and sometimes some people ask me what's good on this. They know I'm a big fan of this story. So I try to compare to uh, what's book in America, in the Western world. One I think, once I think about probably similar to Dante's uh, comedian, okay. But it's not really true. And also think about probably like Odyssey, okay. But I don't think so. But eventually I think probably similar to uh, uh, this book, right? The uh, Gavilers Travel, okay. And it is written, and I see the, uh, an article written by Dr. Uh, Madas, and uh, she has a website called American English Doctor. And she has a, a writing called Gulliver Travel, not just for children. Okay, So I think so that's a pretty similar situation because I used to have a, a reading group and we picked the book to read. And the one day they decided to read the uh, uh, Gulliver's Travels. And I kind of like, think, oh, why we read this one? And the person told me, this one is not for child, okay? That's an adult book. Then I start to read it. And I find out that it's uh, very true, you know? And I think it's the uh, journey to the West and the governor's travel, governor's travel, they face the same fate. They have been over, overly popular among the children or young reader. And then most people read it when they were young. And they kind of have the concept of this is for the children and then they don't read anymore and they just carry this one forever. So I think it's probably the same fate. And, the, and the one thing I like to talk about is two things. These two books are very similar, right? So first is the writing style. Both are humanists, same as uh, 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 travel, uh, uh, journey to the West. It's a humanist talk. Okay. And when I read it in the Chinese, it can, from time to time, I start to laugh. Okay. So I think it's unusual. When you read the Chinese classic, you will burst out to laugh. It's very unusual. And same as the uh, governor's travel, it's very funny. The tone is very funny. And the second thing is that both are satirical, right? And especially in uh, Jonathan Swift's uh, governor's travel, it's it's a satire about the religion, about the English society, about the science development, about the enlightenment era. <clears throat> and same as Journey to the West. It's, I don't see it's a, the author is purposely satire anything, but the writing that you think about uh, the reality of the Confucian society, or you want to call the Buddhism religion, or neo Taoism, uh, but not neo Taoism, the religious stuff, uh, practice. So I think in this way, they are very similar. So I like the conclusion the author write. He said, she said, on the surface, Gulliver's Travels is an entertaining fantasy that appeals especially to young readers. For the adult reader, Swiss masterpiece is a thought provoking study of mankind's capacity for good and evil. That's her comment. So I'd like to call the uh, journey to the West. It's on the surface, journey to the West is an entertaining fantasy that appeal especially to the young readers. But for adult reader, this classic novel is a thought provoking study of human psychology. So I do feel this way. And that's why I feel it was it to continue uh, reading this one even today. And even I have been reading for many times and I still uh, enjoy reading. So I'd like to give some, I will consider this one is my own summary. Of course, if you read uh, or listen to other uh, podcasts or other articles, they, they also may have a different opinion, but this one is just my personal summary. So. I would like to share with everyone. And then, so I would say it is not to, this, this novel is not to teach the lesson, any lesson of overcoming all obstacles in order to reach the goal with the faith and 
uh, perseverance. Okay, I think this lesson is we learn from the real uh, not from the number. And I think this number uh, tells how Chinese pursue happiness and immortality in a well-developed Confucius and bureaucratic world. Okay, so I have some comment on that. Okay, so. The happiness, what I mean is not uh, the bodily or sensual happiness. It more kind of like uh, bodily health and the longevity by practicing thousand qi or thousand qi exercise or Chinese herb medicine. Okay, talk about five elements, yin and yang, pray tai chi, all this kind of improve your health and last to longevity. Okay, so that's, that's what I mean happiness. And also this, this one we call the Taoism happiness. Another happiness is about the Confucianism happiness, which is receive the reputation, the fame, and climb up the social ranking. Okay, so basically this, this novel is talking about the Chinese 16th century how they uh, pursue happiness in, in one word. And uh, also um, uh, about immortality, because you have the two things to pursue. One is in this world, one is And the other word about, is about the uh, mortality. <laughs> one minute, let me... Okay, so about the immortality. So there's a two way to reach, to pursue immortality. One is um, Taoism practice, right? You do the Taoism magic, okay? To pursue the mortality. Another one is Buddhism. You reach the Western Buddha land, okay? So after you die, you can uh, rest in the Western land with Buddha. So that's the situation uh, the Chinese, 16th century Chinese pursue. One is in this world, one is in the other world. And the situation they are facing is a very well developed Confucian bureaucratic world. What I mean this is in today, we might see it's a negative sign, but if you look at the 16th century, Okay, during that time is uh, Queen Elizabeth the first. Okay, it, English is already a very advanced society, but I personally I believe could be biased. But Chinese is a very well developed system in the central government, well organized the society. So in this society, uh, the Chinese society has been organized with Confucian ritual and the legalist bureaucracy, uh, bureaucracy since Han Dynasty. So it's already been 1,500 years, okay, in the Ming Dynasty. So this society in this book, you will see, it's not only a bureaucratic system you are facing, it's also become a, uh, become a rigid, uh, called the rigid model, okay? Through this model, you understand everything. So in this novel, if you go through this novel, you will find out every country they visit, they have their bureaucratic system. Not only in this world, okay? When you go to the heaven, okay? They also have a royal court. They have the jade emperor, they have the their minister, they have the ranking, okay? There are people doing minister, doing everything. Go to the ocean, okay? You have the dragon king. They are taking off everything. Even in the wild world, in the jungle, okay, they have the demons, okay, and they have the earth god, okay. They uh, they control the land, okay. Even the underworld, they have the ten court of underworld king, okay, uh, royal king. They have the ten court to take care of the people, uh, the dead people. Go to the even to the India, okay, the Buddha land, okay. Buddha should be the religion, but Buddha also have a different ranking. They have the uh, Bodhisattva, they have the Arohat, 
and they have a different kind of ranking and they do everything and they take bribe, okay? When, when they go there, what do they do? They ask for bribe, okay? So I think that everything is well organized and that every, uh, I would call it, uh, bureaucratic system all over the place, and which is not true, but but it reflects the situation. How Chinese thinking about the entire universe? It's all well governed, well ordered, and always have somebody, some kind of thing in charge of something. Okay, so that's what I learned from this book, and I think that's important. So I will take a. Uh, Two minutes, three, five minutes uh, break. If you have a question before I move to the story. So uh, I will introduce the story. Okay, so uh, in about 20 minutes, then I will bring you to read one chapter. Well, of course, I didn't read the whole chapter, but I find a good English translation. So I'm going to uh, read this chapter and then we read through and then we got the theory. Okay, how do you think about this novel? Okay, so uh, we are rough, please. Okay, thanks. Uh, I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up, but there's a certain conflict or hostility between the Taoists and the Buddhists in the story. I guess the Taoists are sometimes quite hostile. They're uh, uh, making the Buddhists into their serv the monks, the Buddhist monks into their servants. What's, uh, how does this reflect, relate the relationship between Taoism and Buddhism, either at the original time of the story or at the time when it was written? Well, I, that's a very good question. On the surface, you probably read, I, I believe you read the story, uh, uh, probably the Purpuria, the, uh, the king, okay, was uh, his wife uh, being hijacked or something. There, there, there's a lot of things between the fighting of the religious style and uh, uh, Buddhism, right? So, uh, but if you remember the position of the uh, Tripikata, his position is both are good. Both are the same way. They, he, he didn't say, okay, uh, Buddhism is good, Taoism is not that good. No, he didn't say that. So if you look at in the situation, after Buddhism had been introduced to China, okay, before that, Chinese always talk about heaven, okay, and the emperor is the son of heaven, right? And the Confucius teaching has been connected to the heaven. But think about after Tang Dynasty, Chinese had two heavens. One on the east, okay, and one on the west. So Chinese start to deal two heavens. Okay, so one is Buddhism has heaven. One is Chinese now is heaven. And then they seems conflict, but actually, if you ask anybody, uh, I'm not sure in China, but Taiwan is a heavily religious place. U.S. people, nobody separate these two, right? Basics. Uh, the Buddhism, the Buddha statue is in the Taoism shrine, okay? And then, so it's all mixed together. So I think that this book, I'm glad you raised this question. I think in this book, if you read the real story, you probably will see, you know, how they, uh, these two religions yeah, interact with each other, and especially in Chinese people's mind, how they play these two. Right? So you can see as the, in the story, uh, that's I will read. When the story talk about they are conf they conflict with these two religions, you can see a uh, 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 Chinese mind uh, struggle or debating, you know, which way I have to go. Unlike in Western world, if you are Jews, you will not be Christian. Or if you are Christian, you cannot be Muslim. Even if you are Christian, you have to choose between Catholic and the Protestant. So uh, that and the Chinese mind doesn't work this way. Chinese try to put everything together. So that's the conflict is different than Western world. Thank you. Okay, right. uh, Quan, please. Yes, um, I think that uh, this novel is a very rich one, and there are many layers of interpretation. Uh, but there's one that I would like to suggest. Uh, the four protagonists of the monk, the monkey, 
and the uh, two servants of the monkey. Well, the, the two servants of the monk, uh, uh, the pig and uh, the bearded uh, Sandy. lake monster. Yeah, or the bearded man, let's say. Uh, one interesting interpretation that you might already know is that each of those four characters represent a layer of the human mind, okay? Uh, the monkey is the intellect. That's why he is so powerful, but at the same time, very agitated. Uh, the monk is like the, uh, the arbiter, the, the, the judge, the, the, the me, if you want, okay? If we try to make a rapprochement with- uh, uh, can, uh, can you hold this one for a moment? Okay, so yes. I, I will exactly slide on that. And if you want, you, we, we can talk about this during that time. Oh, okay, right, okay. true. I, I, that, that, that's why I call this one. I think we probably have the same similar view on, the, uh, uh, on this one, because if you look at the, the human psychology point of view, you know, so yes. yeah, of course our analyze could be a little bit different. And, uh, you are welcome to, 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 to share what you think. Yeah. yeah, sure, of course. And who else want to ask question or have a comment? Okay, let's go through the story. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, run through the story and then uh, I think the story could be very, oh, uh, Quan, that's the exactly the, the part I'm going to talk about. I see okay. this, okay, I see this team, okay, as a human part, okay, just a human part, okay, just a human, because everybody have this kind of component. Instead of four, I put five, including the hopes, okay. So yeah. the first thing I would like to look at is uh, the monk, okay, which we call uh, Tripitaka, okay. And a little bit explanation on Tripitaka, and sometimes we call Sanza. Right, that means three basket. And uh, uh, tree means three, pitaka means uh, three basket. So uh, three basket means the sutra, the vinaya, then uh, the apidama, which means if you are a monk, you are master in sutra, in the uh, monastic rules, in the... Um, Losing you, Jason. Jason, come back to us. Jason. Jason, come back to us. Well, he will Lost. be back when he will be defrozen. Yeah. Go and leave, fill us in. Go, you might as well say your bit then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's wait at least 30 seconds. Timing. Yeah, we've lost him, I think, for a bit. Quan Lee, what were you going to say? Yeah, yeah well, I said that uh, it's interesting that he said that uh, he would put the five uh, components instead of four, including the horse, because the horse yeah. probably represents the instinct, the reflexes of the human body, uh, the monkey, the intellect, the monk. Uh, oh, Jason, you're back. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, okay, so I just say that the, that probably you would have said that the monkey represent the bodily functions, uh, the monkey, the intellect, the monk, the, the wisdom, uh, the pig, uh, the instinct and the appetites, and uh, the kind of underwater monster that is uh, represented like a bearded man uh, that one is more difficult to, inter to interpret. I would call him uh, emo the emotional dimensions because it can be very multi-layers and complex. But uh, I look forward to listen to your interpretation, which will be more precise, Jason. Well, I would not say precise, but basics, that's my uh, understanding of this one. So if you look at the monk, right, that should be cut up. And you, I think to me, it represents an I idealistic dream. Like everybody, you have an idealistic dream, okay, which could be very dogmatic. And uh, 
it's impractical, right? But you always have some dream you want to become. That's represented by the monk, okay? And second thing is the monkey, Sun Wukong, okay? And they sometimes they call the great sage. I'm going to explain later. And, and if you don't like him, uh, some people don't like him, we'll call him the horse keeper, okay? So, uh, this one I will see is represent the super ego or your spiritual soul and it's boundaries. So when you face some situation, if you are in the monkey mind, you were thinking outside the social norm. You will not follow what the social norm is doing. So that's the super ego I'm thinking, okay? And the pig, and sometimes they call the pixie or zubajie, or that means the pig of 8%. And sometimes I call it the idiot. Okay, so it represents the it uh, as a Freudian, a Freudian uh, it or animal soul. Okay, which is lazy, find the shortcut like to eat, like to have sex. Okay, all this kind of mind. And you, everybody have this kind of part, right? And the sandy, sometimes I call the data or the friar sandy. And I think the proper name should be Olga, okay? So like a shirk, right? So it's in the room, uh, uh, a monster live in the swamp, okay? So you already, oh, you look at the picture, he uh, all carry a pole, okay, for the luggage. So basics, he is trying to balance. He, his solution is totally opposite than the monkey's solution. He all go inside social norm. Okay, so be polite, be nice, try to balance, and then that's everything. Okay, that's everything we know from the book, but not idealistic, but in the social norm. Okay, and the horse, basically, he, speak, he only speak once, I think, during the uh, whole journey. And what he does, the horse did is, he did all the job. Actually, the, all the travel, he's walking all the way. So the story is different than the real story. The real story, Xuan Zhang, walk or horse riding for two years. Then he traveled, spent 14 years in India. But in this novel, they walk in the uh, Silk Road for 14 years, okay? So the horse did all the job. So in my view, the horse is the, your mind just perform the duty, okay? I don't care what's going on. Okay, you ask me to do this, I do. So. I will read this novel in this way. I will look at this five as your human part of soul or human mind, psychology. So everything happened. They have 81 tribulation, okay? Everything happened, your five elements start to struggle. What's the way to do, all right? So I think that's a good test and to understand the whole novel on this one. So anybody have a different idea who read this one? And like Juan, uh, you want to talk about something? No, I, I think it's a very interesting, the fact that you present the underwater monster as the, the guy um, uh, transporting the burden, okay? Um, the, uh, the burden symbolizing uh, what has been introjected in the mind as uh, the the orders of authoritative figures when you were young and that you interjected those uh, um, those conditionings, if you want. Okay, I, I think it's a it's it's, it's a quite a powerful symbol of the two baskets that he is uh, that is uh, carrying as the symbols of the conditionings, uh, and uh, it it goes a little bit with my understanding of the underwater monsters as uh, symbolizing the emotions, okay? But not the, but the emotions that have not been worked open, okay? Because once that your emotions have been worked open, uh, it's not a burden anymore. Great, right, thank you. So you think of the, uh, the uh, Sandy, that's called Friar Sandy, okay, Sao uh, Wujin. His role is emotion? Uh, yes, wow. Uh, emotion, but who, 
which was which were not uh, transformed. Okay, uh, things uh, which happened in your past life, but you carry as a burden. Okay, since the two basket that he's carrying. Okay, so uh, it's it's a truly a powerful image, uh, and uh, but uh, that's why he's so um, how can I say it uh, so so discreet, not of a uh, show off character like the monkey, for example. Okay, the monkey is definitely a more show off character, having more confidence. So as you said, he represents. Uh, uh, the super ego, the, the element of the of the me having more ambitions and more opening to the outside, that I call the intellect. Okay, the intellect is the is the seat of imagination, of conceptualization, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, of dreams. After all, okay. So I would say that the monkey is the exact opposite to the uh, to the underwater monster. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's a, I see Madeline has a hands up. On, is that true? Uh, Madeline, you want to say something or you want to wait? No, oh, I, I was just going to add uh, to what Quan said about Sandy the ogre, uh -huh. which is that he sounds very Confucian. Uh, <laughs> so the, so the, the monstrous ogre is the Confucian of the crew. You you think he he is confused very confusing du during the, uh, the 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 journey. Uh, Confucian. Oh, Confucianism. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in this part I agree. You know, he is probably. I think that he yes in a way he behaved in this way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, So let's talk about the pilgrimage. It's very simple, right? Okay. Jason? So, yeah. Jason, uh, Ralph has his hand up. Uh, who? Ralph? Uh, I, yeah, Ralph. A question on the monkey. I mean, one of the main characteristics of the monkey king is his temper. He can fly into a fierce temper at times and be very destructive. He doesn't take orders. So in, in, uh, I suppose in a sense, that's the id as well, isn't it? somebody offends him, he can be very destructive and very, very angry. He, he, get, he gets kind of out, I guess, out of control at times. How, how does that fit into this characterization? Okay, so I think this one, I have a different view. Okay, I see some commentary talk about this. He's impulsive, he's naughty, and he's out of control. I don't see this way he is naughty. I see he, the monkey, okay represent the human might and he is strive going up. He always going up, 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 up. He want to reach the highest goal. Okay, I, that's why I, I view this one. I know a lot of people, a lot of commentators talk about his naughty, he's quick, he's fear, he's furious and the day, but I, I don't see this way. Okay, just personally, yeah. I don't see this way. And then and I, I like to go through the real novel to read it. That's why I bring the copy of that to read it. And you probably see a fair description because if you see the cartoon, see the movie, they only can represent something on that. So I don't see he destroyed the heavenly court as an evil. I think he tried to achieve something. Okay, that's I view. That's my view. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Quan, you wanna say something? Yes. Well, it's one Western mythological character that I would say that resemble exactly to the monkey, even if at first sight, no one would make the rapprochement, but it's uh, uh, the Promethean, okay, Prometheus. <laughs> and uh, because uh, Prometheus uh, rebel against the God, okay, against Zeus to be exact. <laughs> and he has been punished for that and uh, uh, quite cruelly. And uh, the same, the same thing. The monkey is rebelling against the Chinese god, if you want, or the Jade Emperor, uh, and uh, he has been punished for that too. And uh, but uh, because the Monkey King has a a comical dimension in him, you would never make the rapprochement with a tragic character like Prometheus. I think that's a good uh, a same, uh, a comparison. Yeah, thank you, uh, Nick. Please. I just, uh, I, yeah, I've used the story of the Monkey King as the story of man. 
in his, um, you know, in, in his um, fight against his own, not only ego and super ego, whatever, but also his animal mind. And um, that's how I've always seen the Monkey King, that it's just actually a story of man himself. Um, and I can relate to that a lot. So, so okay. that's why. I relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, great. Okay, so uh, the pilgrimage. Okay, so it's simple, 14 years. And they spend, okay, Chinese year is 360 days. So 14 times uh, 360, that's uh, 5,040. So uh, he, they spend 5,040 days to reach to the Buddha land, which is day in temple, the Sandarin monastery, okay? And then remember we talked about three pitaka. Pitaka is one basket, which is a number, 5,048. So they short of eight days. So they spend only eight days travel back from Buddha land, which is in India to China. So the total number is 5,048 days, which is one basket or one uh, uh, pitaka. Okay, so that's the date. Total is 81. Uh, you know, Dao De Jing have 81 chapter. 81 is a good number. So they have a total 81 tribulations. So they threw different things. Flaming Mountain, you know, many, many things. Some people may see, oh, that's just the series, uh, you know, again and again. But I kind of not think in this way, if you look at the team as a human psychology, so each one is a thought experience you have. So, you know, it's bringing you to the different situation, different challenges to understand, you know, what's going on. You know, and I try to test your um, uh, uh, mind. Okay. So uh, eventually they visit the living Buddha, which is uh, here he called Rulai, or the proper name is uh, Tasagatas, uh, in the Day in Temple, uh, Vajra Peak in India. So the Buddha gives the sutra to Tripitaka. So simple story. And then reward, right? Of course, you need a reward. So after that, uh, both the, they bring the, uh, the, the sutra back, how many score the sutra? You can guess the number, 5,048 okay, to China. And then Tripikata and the Sun Wukong reach the rank because you need a reward. They become, they have a heavenly ranking. So which is, they reach the highest, which is uh, uh, the uh, Buddha. Uh, that's the monkey, right? That's the monkey. And the, this one is the monk, right? So we reach the Buddhahood. Pixie, since he already always like a woman, like to eat, so become the altar waiter or so-called altar cleaner. And the Sandy, okay, become the arrowhunt, okay? And the, the horse also become a Naka. Naka is kind of the dragon in the heaven. So they all reach a certain uh, level on that. So, that's the, the story, okay, simple. Then more complex would be their biography, okay? So the monkey's biography is the most uh, complex because he is the main character from the very beginning. So first he was born as a stone egg, which is produced by the coupling of heaven and the earth. So that's the stone rock. And then he, come out, become a monkey. And in the monkey tribe, he achieved the leading role. So he named himself the handsome monkey king. So he become the leader of the monkey. Then just like I said, he's always moving up. Okay, he's not happy with what he has. He always, always moving up. So he, uh, uh, he tried to, he study with uh, so-called the master body. Master body give him the name called Sun Wu Kong. Okay. So that means Sun means monkey. Wu Kong means awaken to emptiness, empathy, emptiness. So basically, you can think about situation. 
he did in the uh, the secular world. He know everything. He want to everything, but they want him to awake to the emptiness. Okay, that's what he want to do. And what he learned from the master Bodhi, he learned seventy two transformation. Okay, so basically he can transform to any kind of thing he want to do. And then he get the very famous weapon, the, the we call it as you will go bending budget. Okay, from the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea. And then um, the war, more important thing, he went to the underworld, removed his name from the dead book of death. Okay, so that means that he will never die. According to the tradition, everybody's name is in the book of death. So they will write which, which day you will die. Okay, so, you know, that's being said. You are fated to die on that day. But he went to the underworld, he removed his name, so he never died. So he, because he make a lot of trouble and then uh, the heavenly court, they decide to control him and the find out it's difficult. That's why. So they think like, okay, he is just a monkey, right? So let's give him a title. Let's call the keeper of the horse, okay? So ask him to take care of the horse. So he's happy because he already achieved to the heavenly position, the keeper of horse. But he's just a monkey. He says, okay. Very, very low. It's, you know, he, so he. Jason, you're breaking up he, again. Shoot. Give it a second. You'll be all right. So how about? Not yet. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're back. Yeah. You're back. Are you, you are back now, Jason. But okay, that's okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no, that's okay. Okay, so basically, he. Uh, where am I? Okay, so basically, he uh, he he find out he been insulted by giving the title as. Uh, the keeper of the horse. He went back to his home, self-appointed as the great sage equal to the heaven. Okay, that's the highest, highest number. He's equal to heaven. So he started to rebel against the heaven. Okay, because the heaven is ruled by the Jade Emperor. And the Jade Emperor sent 100,000 heavenly troops try to catch him, but failed. All right. So, they got an idea. Since he's just a monkey, okay, let's give him a title called the Great Sage Equal to the Heaven. That's the highest, highest title. And then, well, he's just a monkey. Then just give him the title, he will be happy. Then we are in peace. So that's the solution. So he become a uh, title. That's why later on people call him the Great Sage, which is Great Sage Equal to the Heaven. And then he has nothing to do over there. So they just ask him to watch the peach garden. Okay, so, you know, so he watched the peach garden, but unfortunately well, he been there and he started to steal the peach. Okay, and one day he find out the queen mother's birthday banquet. Queen mother is the mother of the emperor Jade. Okay, the birthday party, the birthday banquet never invite him. So he all of a sudden realized even he has the highest title and nobody really respect him. Even the party never invite him. So he start to wreak havoc in the heavenly palace and request the Jade Emperor to abdicate. He want to become the Jade Emperor. Okay. So that's his request because he knows, you know, and he can do anything he want. So Jade Emperor has no choice, but go to the Western land to ask Buddha to help. So that's the story, uh, uh, the uh, Monkey King story. And before that, we can talk about how powerful he is, right? So he learned from the Master Buddha, uh, uh, Master Buddha, okay, that's his uh, master. He learned the somersault cloud. He has a somersault cloud, just like this picture showed. And one somersault, he can go 108,000 li or mile whatever you want to call. And he got the golden band gajo, which is still from the Dragon King of the East Sea. 
and uh, this gajal can be as big as to reach to the heaven or be as small as a needle. So he usually put um, uh, 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 inside his ear uh, so people don't see it. And he can have a 72 polymorphic transformation. He can become a fly, become a man, become a girl, become a dog, and uh, become a, uh, whatever he wants to become. He can transform and transform back. And his body is indestructible okay, because he ate heavenly peaches and also all the Laozi's peel. Okay, Laozi is the author of the Tao Te Ching. In the Taoism tradition, become a, a high position in the heaven, and he has a, a peel of uh, immortality, which is a, a elixir. Okay, so each of his hair can become another Sun Wukong. So he can pull out his hair and then make a lot of Sun Wukong to fight again. So that's how powerful he is. Okay, so um, the bet between uh, the Buddha and uh, uh, Sun Wukong is if Buddha said, if you can jump out my hand, okay, I will ask Jade Emperor to uh, abdicate his throne to retire and you become the Jade Emperor. All right. But if he, okay, and the Sun Wukong thing, the monkey thing, that's easy. So he flipped over and fly and he hit a five column and he think, what? Well, that's the end of the world. So he write down a word, okay? Say, the great sage visit here and then pee over there as uh, evidence he has been to the end of world and decide to come back to see the Buddha. And when he come back, he find out on Buddha's middle finger is write down his words. Okay, the great sage visit here and his pee is under the hand. So technically he never leave Buddha's hand. So Buddha seal him under the five element mountain. Okay. And then uh, 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 put the uh, 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 so-called uh, talisman, uh, Omani Padmiha, okay, on top. So he will be here for 500 years until Chepikata all right, to save him. So that's his punishment. Okay, so basics, that's the uh, story of the, just one minute. Okay. So that's the story of the monkey. Then we talk about the monk, okay, the Chupikata. So actually it's from the Xuanzang. So that's the only part historical correct okay, uh, in the story because they really have uh, this person, but his background is totally fictionary. Okay, so he was the golden cicada, is uh, Buddha's uh, disciple, which is not true, okay, only in the story. Okay, and he was punished because you know supposedly he should become a Buddha because he's a Buddha's uh, disciple. But he listened Buddha's preaching, is not pay attention for sleep, so he been punished to send as a mortal. So he had been pure young, so that means he has been virgin for ten generation. Okay, right so here he's talking about pure young means he never not only. Uh, never have sex, he never have ejaculation, okay? So his meat, his flesh become the excellent of immortality. That's why, you know, all the people, all the monsters want to eat him because we will reach the immortality. And then if you talk about his father was the highest rank in the imperial examination and married the daughter of prime minister, just like typical story, but which is not true. And he father was murdered, and then he was sent to the river to avoid murder. And he was rescued by the master farming in the Golden Mountain Temple. And then, basically, in the story you will see, he has no survival skills. Only thing he knows is follow the Buddhist precept: no killing, no sex, no meat, dish, nothing. Okay, and crying a lot. Okay, so that's what I mean in the 
monk represent our human mind as an idealistic, dogmatic world. You only know what's the good thing, what's the right thing, but which is totally uh, impractical. So since the monkey is so powerful, how can he control the monkey? So basics, they have a headband put on the uh, monkey's hand and then uh, Avalokiteshvara or Guan Yin uh, and uh, Tripitaka, only these two person, okay, know the secret mantra. When they recite the mantra, you will have a heavy headache, okay? And there's no way to take out the uh, headband. Okay, so that's the way to control him. And the pig. Okay, sometimes we call the pixie, okay, zhu ba jie, okay, or sometimes called wu neng, okay. Remember, awaken to ability because he's lazy, doing nothing, so you want him to awaken to ability, okay. So uh, he was the marshal and the commander of the heavenly navy, okay. And then uh, he has been punished, why? Okay, because he harassed the moon goddess. We just passed the uh, moon festival. Okay, so people talk about the Chang'e, who is the moon goddess, the beauty. Okay, and then uh, the pig, he was a, a, a commander of heavy, heavenly navy, but he harassed the moon uh, goddess. So he being punished to send to the uh, uh, the, 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 in this world, but the, because of the mistake, some error, mechanical error in samsara. So he was born inside the womb of a swan. That's why he looked like a pig. And then, uh, so technically, I don't know other place. I know in some Taiwan and the Southeast Asian, he has been viewed as the patron deity of masseuses, hatres, prostitutes, okay, uh, this one, because they wish all men like pixie, so they have a lot of business, so uh, that's a side story. This one, the Sandy or Ogre, okay, he also has a heavenly position as a general, but he was banished because he broken, breaking the crystal goblet of the queen mother, and then he was reborn as ogre in the flowing Saint River. He was named as awakened to purity. Remember, he was in the dirty place. So we want him to awaken to the purity. So he's become a Tripikata's disciple, the third one. And he always carried the luggage, just like Quan said, he probably represents the emotion and his heavy burden. burden. That's another way to look at and then I see it's more on the balance on two sides, okay, because he carried the pole. And he, uh, Madeline said, he think he is more like a Confucian, okay. So uh, he always polite, follow the rule, and then, so that's him. Another one, the team, the, another one is the, the horse, so-called the white dragon horse. He is the third son of the dragon king of the West Sea, okay, and he was sentenced to death by setting fire on his father's great pearl because he violated the doctrine of Xiao, which is filial piety. That's a severe okay, punishment, so death. But Guan Yin, Avadoki, Tishvara, Bodhisattva rescued him by changing him into a horse and kind of like uh, doing the job to carry uh, carry the Tripitata to the West. That become his job. So this one is their team. And one thing you probably notice or not notice is they all have seen this five, all have seen this different, right? The Tripitata just not listening the Buddha's teaching. Sun Wukong, the monkey, he rebelled against the heaven. Uh, the pig, the pixie, harassed the goddess. And uh, the Sandy, his problem is he broke okay, the crystal goblet of the Queen Mother. And the horse, because a dragon, he set the fire on 
his father's great pearl. And they all got a severe punishment, some even death punishment. So you can see this kind of society. And what's the rule at this one? And my understanding is depend on what's your originality, right? If you are original in a high position, your punishment is not that severe. But you know, I think that's interesting to look at, you know, uh, their punishment. So um, that's the thing I like the good subject I'm thinking is why do we still read the journey to the West, right? And again, that's just my, uh, uh, my opinion. So uh, number one, I think it's entertaining. That's no doubt about it. And the, uh, the language is full of uh, common saying, pervert and colloquial speech, okay? And the tone is very humorous. And I know that's the, the obvious part. And the second thing is I look at this one as a, a human psychology. And every time you can see how do we respond to different kinds of challenge, right? If you, you are Tripitaka part, you will respond idealistically or dogmatically. If you are Sun Wukong, you are looking for non-traditional solution. You are trying to make all out effort in your heart, but that means you will do it because you have the lazy part, which is a pixie, okay? So you always find the shortcut. You want to do the this 10, you want to maximize your pressure, okay? You want to go from your nature, okay? Which is lazy, food, sex, all this kind of thing. If you are sandy, okay? You probably try to balance all the possibility, looking for traditional solution, or just like a Quan said, you carry the heavy burden of your emotion, right? If you are the horse part, you probably thinking about you just do the job. That's my duty, I just do it. So uh, that's the way we can reflect our mind when we read this novel. Another thing is interesting is use this novel. For example, you probably can see in the previous introduction of different biographies, you can see that we can understand the worldview of the 16th century Chinese, which I believe not much different okay, than today. And uh, you will see the Confucian and social hierarchy, okay, and uh, their ritual on that, okay, and uh, the bureaucratic system, uh, on present bureaucracy, the two heaven world, even still today, okay. Sometimes in Taiwan, go the temple, you really don't know it's Buddhism temple or a uh, uh, Taoism temple, and that's for sure we know that's two different heavens. But the practice is the same, sometimes different. More important, I think that's that every modern people think about the meaning of life. And they are even today, even today, this time in America, we always have the two things to think about. One is more Confucianism time. You want to pursue the fame, the wealth, the fortune, the position, that's the secular side. And then on the other side, you also want to live long, longevity, you want to be healthy, you, you want to achieve something on your own self, okay? And we always struggle in these two things. And this <coughs> thing, we can say they are in the same way, but in a way, they conflict in many ways. So that's the reason, okay? I think it's still worth it to, to read this novel and I talk about the real novel, not the cartoon or uh, 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 a movie, this kind of thing. So that's my take. So before I move on to... You're frozen. Lost you, Jason. Again, we lost you for a bit. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, so can you hear me now? okay, just one minute. 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 Okay, just
<laughs> okay, you're still frozen on your main one, you but your backup sound was well. Oh. Yeah, we lost you. Still got you on backup. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. That sounded, by the way, that sounded like a sound effect from the TV version of the water margin. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. For some reason, my internet has some problem. Okay, I, I should fix. Okay, so I'm going to use my phone. Okay. So, okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, any, uh, any comment on this one? Uh, Hugh, please. I haven't seen you yeah. for a long time. Yeah, yeah I know. I took a little break. Um, so, is there any relations to some of the some of the celebrations and traditions that they do in Taiwan? Like, I, I have a friend who says that at a certain time of year they have uh, like pigs on stakes, and I'm wondering, is there any relation? No. Okay. I, I, I just a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, any comment or anything we want to share about uh, 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 this part before I go back to to read the the novel? So, so um, I guess what got, what got Monkey into trouble was that he wanted to the Jade Emperor's seat of heaven without having to work from the ground up. Right? He just wanted to go to the top. Well, in my opinion, he he worked from the ground up, right? He, he think about his story. Okay, that's my view. Okay, just yeah. He worked from the ground up. He born as a monkey. He achieved the handsome monkey king. He learned the master from the master. He learned all the skill. Okay, he he been to the time his death. He been sent to underworld. He just threat. Okay, the uh. The, the, the king uh, in the underworld removed his name from the, uh, uh, from the book of death. And yeah. then he going up and up and up. He just want to become the best of the best. You know, sure. in another way, nothing wrong. And then this heavenly gods treat him unfairly, right? They give him the title <laughs> and right. uh, really not respect him. And then I feel sorry about him. Oh, just me, just me. Okay, but that, that's my view, you know. I see. Oh. Did you get my point? <laughs> yeah, no, I understand you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have uh, Karen and uh, Madeline. Please. Kevin, please. I think Madeline was first if she's. Okay, Madeline, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just a question about the Monkey King's origins. I know it says that he was a stone initially, and I'm wondering, was that stone jade? No, just a regular stone. So let's because go. this stone, this that's an egg, okay? It's because the pure tea from heaven and the earth, they copper it, they produce the stone egg and the for million years, inside they have the fetus, monkey fetus coming out. Okay, and the one day it bursts out. That's a monkey. So that's the story described, which is unusual in Chinese story, because uh, Chinese story usually don't talk about the, the, the originality you know, of uh, like this. But uh, that's that's the story. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, in in the podcast, they mentioned, and I think it, it was in the extra time comments that the the novel kind of fizzles out that it doesn't have much of an ending. So I, I was wondering if you could say what your opinion of the ending is. I haven't I haven't read the book, and if it if it was unusual compared to other Chinese novels of the time, or or what you think of the ending, does it fit with the I, okay, I got your point. I disagree on the podcast. I think it is a perfect ending to me. Okay. I think it's a perfect ending and then they should end there. And they have the continuous story. I think it doesn't make sense to me. 
totally nonsense at all. And this hundred uh, chapter, I will say perfect. Okay, and nothing wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I would like to take 10, uh, 10 seconds. To, okay, um, please. To, to push on your answer. I, I agree with you that the novel ends perfectly. Uh, okay. Because, uh, and if we take into account that the monkey represents human ambitions and the human will to go higher and higher to, and to achieve a, a greater and greater goals in life uh, for ourselves and for mankind, of course, uh, the fact that at the end of the novel, the monkey king uh, achieve, if I may say so, because the word achieve is maybe a little bit clumsy for that, but let's say not achieve, but realize his Buddhahood, okay? Because he, be, he became a Buddha at the end of the novel. Uh, so uh, it shows a little bit uh, the human journey, uh, having to go through ambition and to break the social uh, burden precisely. And uh, because of that journey of struggle and of uh, going beyond the social burden, Eventually, you would realize uh, your pure consciousness and you would have true peace at the end of that journey. Okay, uh, thank you, Kwam. Okay, so uh, I think, do we have any hands up? Uh, okay, so let's read the uh, novel. Okay, since we have uh, 20 minutes left, so I try to uh, only read the part of that, okay? So before that, uh, just some pictures show you and to make sure when we read it, we understand. When we talk about the uh, pagoda, that's the pagoda, a Buddhism pagoda, usually it's put the uh, sutra or everything. And this one so-called uh, immortal shows the way, uh, that's the Chinese Kung Fu one way, that this pose called immortal shows the way, Xian Ren Zi Lu, if you know Chinese. And that's the ritual, okay? Not practice today, but only practice when you have, for example, your parents' funeral, you probably do that so-called koto, okay? You kneel and then hit your head, uh, punch the ground, okay? This one I'm talking about the earth deity, okay? The earth deity, uh, that's a tu di gong, okay? So usually in the most of place, okay? Then you have the, that's the local god because they in charge of this day. So some local gods are huge because the, just like when you buy property, right? Some property are expensive, some property are poor, not expensive. So the rich, the wealth of the, the earth deity depend on the value of the dead. And they usually is an old man and they have a wife, okay? So that's the very low ranking god and the people will uh, offer the sacrifice to them twice a month, okay, in most of the place. Okay, so that's just background, so you will understand. So let's read this one, okay. I'm reading the chapter 72, okay, which is the seven emotions confuse the basic gossamer cape, which is spider. They talk about spider spirit and uh, the field screen scene, uh, spring, uh, spring the spring in the spring and pick pixie forget himself okay so that story so the story tell how san zhang which is san zhang which is uh, uh chubitaka he left the purporeal which is the king uh, previous visit and he i think they kill cure his disease and they get everything ready set out the horse and load it and westward Okay, that's finish one uh, uh, trouble, then move westward. And uh, then they cross many mountain and the river before they realize it's autumn and the winter, that's the general description. And uh, to land, the, 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 the master stopped, okay, and noticed the building amid the tree, Sansan dismounted and stood beside the main track. The brother monkey, which is a Sun Kong, said, master, the road is easy and there is no evil about. Evil, that means the devil, okay? Why, so why have you to stop? And then he said, uh, 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 the pig said, uh, you are not at all understanding, brother. Okay, the master is feeling sleepy 
and in the saddle for a long time, you don't let him get down and the rest. And the Sanza, Chupikata said, it's not that. I can see a house over there. I was thinking of going there myself to beg for some food. Okay, so they are mendicant, right? So their food is begging. Okay, they're begging food for that. So the, the, the conversation continued. Okay, what a thing for the master to say, the monkey said with a smile. If you want some food, I will go and beg some for you. And the, the saying, they start to quote the saying, your teacher for a day, your teacher for a day is your father for the rest of your life. That's the common saying, okay, for all Chinese know. Okay, it will be outrage for me, your disciple, to sit here idle and then my, my master go to beg it. Okay, they start to continue. Okay, let me move on. So, Basics, they talk about like, okay, but master, you won't know what to do. The pig said, as, uh, the saying, right? Uh, I say, okay, so when there is a job to be done, the disciple does it, okay? The pig is called Anadek, um, Confucius and all, right? So Anadek, right? So when the, there's a job to be done and the disciple has to do it, he said, I do it, the Sanza. The Chibikara say, disciples, okay? The weather is good today. It's not at all like the time when you have to go far away in wind and the rain. Let me go to this house where I get any food or not. I shall soon be back and then we shall be on our way. So you see the same thing start to talk about, okay? Stop arguing so much, brother. And as the master has made his mind, uh, shouldn't disobey him. If you accept him, he will not eat any food as you be able to get. So that's the conversation. Then the story is the Tribikata goes through and they see the woman. Oh, I skipped most of the part. And then they invite, okay, Tribikata, Sanza to their house. Okay. So start to call them Tang priest. Okay. So sometimes they call Tribikata, Sanza, sometimes they call Tang priest because he represents. Uh, the kingdom of Tang, Tang, okay. So she go there, so the, uh, the ladies invite him, say, okay, please sit down, venerable elder, the woman all said with simpering smile, and he had no choice but to sit down. A little later, he found himself shuddering, okay, because he doesn't feel right about these ladies. So what monastery are you from, Reven uh, Revent, sir? The woman asked, for what purpose are you collecting arms? Okay, you can see here, during that time, the charity uh, religious has been very mature. So the lady asked, are you repairing roads and the bridges, founding monasteries, worshiping at the pogatas, and or having Buddha statues made and the sutras printed? So they will collect money to build the road or to build the bridge to print uh, sutras, right? So when you show us your donation book, so, you know, the accounting system is very well developed. When you donate money, you want to see their donation book, okay? So that's the life they have, okay? So we will see how the uh, Chibikata answered. He said, oh, if we are not here to ask for charity, uh, then why are you here? The woman said, okay. We have been sent, okay, the, uh, been sent by the great town in the east to the Thunder Mon Monastery, which is day in temple, the Thundering Temple. Uh, the Divine Buddha is stay there in the Western heaven to fetch the scripture, San Zhang replied, right? So, okay, they continue. So, uh, they also quote the, uh, the common saying, the monk from afar most love to read the scripture. So going on and on, then, okay, so they start to cook. The ladies uh, insist to cook some food, uh, some food for uh, Tribikata. So while three of women kept him a company talking about the such matters as a primary and secondary cook. So here he's talking about, they say, the discussion about Yin Yuan, okay, the links of dependent origination, okay. so. They talk, basically they talk about some Buddhism saying, okay? And the other four went into the kitchen, 
where they tuck up their clothes, roll up their sleeve, fan the fire, scrub the cooking pot. Do you, uh, so here, here is the author. The, the tone has been changed. The author is talking to you. Do you know what it, uh, do you know what it was they prepare? They pre prepare frying in human fat. Uh, what they cooked was the human flesh still in the break pass of it. And they, they use human brain cut out as basically talk about tofu, use human brain as tofu. So surprisingly here is they travel, travel to the foreign land and then everybody not only speak Chinese, like a Hollywood movie, everybody speak English and they all eat the Chinese food. So they fry, they uh, eat tofu. And of course, right, you will see, uh, they serve this food to um, Chibikata as soon as the sundown, the nose smell it and the fresh to eat, he smell very bad. He will say, Bodhisattva. Okay, that's the way um, uh, a monk will call uh, a day people Bodhisattva and female Bodhisattva, okay, kind of respect. I have been a vegetarian since birth. Okay, oh, they say this is vegetarian food, okay, sir. Okay, and then the uh, Bodhisattva will say, uh, Amitabha. Amitabha Buddha. Okay, so that's kind of like we say, Amen, God, God forgive me, this kind of thing. So he, he know it's not uh, uh, vegetarian food, so he refused to eat, right? So the, the conversation continue, right? So, uh, okay, so he talk about the, uh, the Sanzang, the Chibikata, try to get out because he knows, okay, uh, this woman, a uh, monster, okay. So you want to get away. And uh, then the woman said, the business is bring itself to our door. They said, you had no more chance of getting away from here than covering up a fraud with your hand. It means too late. You quote the common saying, okay, after you fraud, you want to cover, too late, you cannot leave. So they, Drag the uh, the monk, the Tripikata, and the tie up in the form of immortal shows the way. Remember the Kung Fu way? They just tie up in the way, one hand upside down and tie him up. So uh, when they look at this one, you will see, okay, so uh, despite the misery, Sun Zhang kept careful eye on the woman. When they had him tie up securely, and the hand in there start to remove their clothes. They start to take off the clothes. This alarm, the venerable elder, the uh, Chibikata start to worry. They thought that they must be taking their clothes off because they are going to beat me. Perhaps they are going to eat me too. Okay, I think this translation is a little bit off. The Chinese words are talking about to beat me with my chin, my emotion. So he's worried about this woman want to have a sex with him, okay? So perfect that they want to have a sex with his dog. So they were, it turned out that they just unbutton their gaze browser, uh, gaze browser and uh, show it from their stomach. And they produce the silk rope and the silk uh, stuff ran to tie up because they are spider, the spirit of spider. So that's why they only tie him up. So then the scene changed back to, um, the uh, Sun Wukong and the, the pixie, they are sitting together, they are discussing and the Sun Wukong climb to the tree. They see the sign, the ear omen, okay, they know. Okay, they say, oh, the master been in trouble. Okay, so uh, the pig say, okay, that's a safe game. So basics, that's their conversation. And then, uh, okay. So they've been tied it up and so, okay. So here, the gray sage, the monkey, okay, tighten up his tiger skin kilt, pull up his golden band gadget and take a few strides forward, okay. He go there, he try to save uh, uh, his master, okay. So he going on and then, you know, since he does not know the place, he called the, old local guard, which is the earth deity, to know more information, okay? So the, the local guard is 
afraid of him uh, because he's, he, he's, he's worried and because he knows Sun Wukong is not an easy guy. So you don't understand the local, the local God replied, uh, Earth deity, right? There's a great sage equal in heaven here. I didn't go to meet him, but he is ascending for me. So when you go there, okay, so when he see the great sage, the Sun Wukong, the local deity called hold to him. He has to, you know, even he is God, he has to kneel down and knock his head as a respect because he worry, you know, the monkey king will hit him if he doesn't behave well. So, of course, Sun Wukong start to ask, uh, what's the place? What kind of monster you have? And the, uh, the earth deity answer, okay? He said, I'm much too weak and insignificant to know this. The local god replied, all I can tell you is that a mile due south here is a natural hot spring called Fields Clean Spring. So he started to describe the, uh, the hot spring there and the, the devil will go there to take a bath. So the great sage, okay, so start to change himself to a fly and wait in there, okay. And then later on, he see the lady walk through, okay. So they just see this these beautiful ladies, okay, seven beautiful ladies, okay. So I show the picture here from the movie. So basically they will interrupt with some point, describe the beautiful because there's no picture. So, uh, so Chinese poetry is kind of like equivalent to picture. So it describes how beautiful all these seven. So what you can see what the monkey talk laugh. He say, no wonder the master wanted to come back in for food with all these lovelies here. If there are seven beauties that have to capture him, he haven't enough for single meal for them. Okay, because he said these seven monsters, seven female monsters will eat them, but my master will not enough for one meal. If they caught him in uh, this couple of days, if they take him in terms to have their way with him, okay. So this one is they would in turn to have sex with him, okay, and uh, then he cannot, he will be killed, okay, uh, straight off, okay. So I'd better listen to what's going on. So he start to go to and he, he see the seven lady jumped to the. Uh, hot spring to take a shower. Okay, so that's a description of their term. They completely naked, unlike the movie, they still wear the bathing suit. That's not true. In the story said, they all naked, jump to the water. And then the Sun Kong see the situation, he think, okay, that's the time to kill them, right? But the Sun Kong's concern is different. He said, if I hit them, I'd kill them. But it would be, you won't do any my reputation any good. Okay, as the saying, he started to call the saying, a real man doesn't fight women. It'd be hopeless if a man like me kill these girls. Okay, so he's a hero. How can I kill these girls? So what he does, okay, he turned himself as an eagle. So uh, Sun Kong started to change himself into an eagle. So he coming down as an eagle, fetch all the clothes, okay? So then he come back, he say, okay, they without the clothes and then uh, uh, they cannot come out to feel shame on that. So we can uh, rescue the, uh, uh, rescue the, the master. So when you go back, the pixie said, well, why you take all these clothes, right? So how you clothes, strip off them so clean. So uh, the monkey kid, uh, <clears throat> Sun Wukong started to uh, explain. This place is called Gosma Ridge and the, uh, the farm is called Gosma Cave. The seven she devil live there, capture the master hanging him up in the cave and all went off the base in the filthy cleansing uh, spring. It's a natural hot spring, okay? They say, I will, so he said, I'm thinking about kill him, but I don't want to do it because I worry you will contaminate my culture and ruin my reputation. So he said, oh, like people like me, I'm not going to kill the woman. So I just take off 
you know, still they are closed. So we are safe to save the master. So, you know, the pixie will be different response, right? He see they have the woman, he think that's wonderful. So, you know, so he start to uh, talking about, oh, that's not right, right? You have to kill them. Then the uh, monkey said, okay, go ahead to kill them. So you will see, um, Okay, so, so the pixie went to uh, the, in the high spirit and the rush straight there. He's raked on his love, okay. So he go there and to visit the woman in the past. So woman still uh, curse the, uh, the beast, which is the, e the eagle, take away their clothes. Okay, so the pig start to say, laughing, they say, Buddhist trauma, okay, the ladies, okay. Carry on with your best. Do you mind if I join you? If you see the they, they, they naked and he's happy, he say, oh, let's take the best together. You monk, you are disgraced. The devil retorted angrily, say, you are lay, uh, we are lay woman and you are men of religious. How can you do this, right? So they start to argue and the story goes on. He went off and then jumped inside, become a catfish and just fooling around the, the woman and that because he was the commander of heavenly navy. So he's good in swimming. So basically, you know, he just caressed them for a while, then jump up, then go back to his nature. He said, okay, so right now he's ready to become a righteous man, okay? So I say, okay, uh, he start to call himself. Uh, he said, I'm the disciple of venerable Tang priest. Okay, and the sent from the town in the east to fetch scripture. My title is Marshal Temper, Heavenly Canopy, and I'm called Zhu Wu Neng, Eight Percepts. You are hungry master. Okay, so basically he's ready to perform the righteous thing. So that's pretty much the story. And of course, he going on, the lady just being in danger to so jump out and the, you know, use their magic, have the spider web come out, tie him up. So right now the story become, instead to uh, the Tripikata in danger, and also the pig also in captive, right? So Sun Kong must to save not one, but two, okay? So keep going on. So that's this kind of story. I hope it's a little bit not too rushed, but basically I just give you the flavor about the reading this novel and then I jumped around, but basically that's the uh, story I uh, like to talk about uh, to this point. So uh, it's time, it's up now and I hope I'm not too rushed. So if you have any question or any comment, welcome. Yeah, so uh, any question or any yeah, comment? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, that story, Nick, yes, if, I'm sorry. Nick, please. Nick? Yeah, no, I just, it, yeah, it just reminded me of also the movie, though. I had seen the, the, the one with the spider women. Uh, but I was going to mention is um, uh, the, the podcast, uh, how can I get the podcast? Or is there a link that I could listen yeah, to that? Yeah. Or is that what you listened to last week? Yeah, that, that's a link on that. They have a podcast. They have the three, uh, basically, they are scholars okay. and they, they discuss on, uh, on this novel, yeah. I remember reading an article maybe about five years ago that they found the, um, the, uh, the grave of the Monkey King, but I, you know, I, I mean, of course it's a mythical, you know, but uh, I remember reading that, I gotta find it. I'll try to find it for next time. But, so how can you have a grave? But, but it was, thank you, it was a great. So well, any... I know, I know that's what I was wondering too, but. Well, I was in China. I was going to try to get there to see it, but apparently there must have been something in the local village that maybe there was somebody, supposedly the monkey. I don't know. You know, what I mean? that probably really liked because I like the character very much that I even dress up and I do, you know, you know, like events and stuff as the character. And so, so um, me, perhaps it was something like that in history, you know, but, um, but interesting. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a uh, uh, no. Any comment? Yeah. What What was the moral of the story there? Keep away from pretty women. 
kills, he kills me. What's the moral story? Moral of that particular part, yeah, not the whole. I, that's a, that's my view. I don't see this one. Uh, this novel have any moral teaching. Basically, it should reflect the your psychological situation, right? So you, well, I don't know you, but I will not deny if I'm in this situation. I also have the pixie part of that, right? And I think the pixie part of this question oh. is very, very real. Okay, put this way, because you see a lot of people. They will sometimes they take advantage. And they will do the heroic behavior when he see there's no danger. Okay, he see the woman naked, and they ready to do the righteous thing because it's easy, it's safe. Okay, so that's the thing. And the Sun Wukong's response is very interesting. He can easily cure these evils. Okay, but he worry about his reputation more. Okay, as a man, a, a hero, how can I cure these seven women? That's not good. So he would rather kind of steal their clothes. So I think that's very vividly reflect human uh, <clears throat> condition when you think about things. Yeah. Uh, Madeline, please. Well, I was thinking about that too, uh, DLJ. Um, <laughs> What caught <clears throat> what caught my eye was earlier on the mention of the yin yuan, which is the dependent co arising of dharma, mm -hmm. and I thought perhaps um, all of these gossamer webs. Okay, well to start with, there's the temptation to kind of uh, regress in your dharma, to not be a vegetarian in the worst way possible, to um, to be tempted by sex. And then there are the gossamer webs, which might be the dependent co-arising of, of um, multiple causes of dharma. And that you can't just hit your way through them with a cudgel. Uh, you have to go through them more subtly. Although I'm not certain if the moral of the story is to go through it uh, with your id. <laughs> uh, here with your pigsy self. <laughs> well, there are many ways. Uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, there's many ways to read this one. And then if you read the other section, because the pixie knows that's just, he see that's just lady and being naked. So he start to become brave person, right? He say, oh, that's not right. You know, we should kill them to save the master, uh, our master, okay? And then in other story, when he knows the monster is huge, is fearful, is a male, he starts to say, oh, that's too dangerous. And then how about that dismiss our team and then and let's go home. And I'm going to see my wife because he married uh, when he was in the uh, Gao village. You know, he has a wife. So, oh, I'm going back to see my wife. So he's this kind of person. So uh, they have many different situations and they have the different kind of response. And I think that's interesting to uh, read through and it's entertaining in a way. And in another way, it's a uh, uh, deep on your human mind about how you think things. You know, sure. so, and, and especially also well, interesting. Is that human condition, today's human condition, yeah, it's very much today's human condition. And the thing about the uh, Tripikata is also interesting. You know, he did everything right, okay? Follow the book, okay? But in reality, it become totally useless, okay? It's very impractical. The only thing he know is going west, okay? And then uh, continue his trip and not violate the rules and, you know, uh, uh, totally idealistic thinking, and which is not practical at all. So, uh, but we all have this part. That's a, that's my point. Right. So, any last comment? And then, well, at least I would. The purpose here, just like I say at the beginning, I try to let everybody know this book is not just for children. Okay. So if you agree, that means I did a good job. If you disagree, you still see that one as a, a, a children's book, then okay, so that means I failed. Anyway, uh, oh God, I guess it, it, it appeals 
but I get, but Jason, I guess it appeals to all ages though, right? Because I mean, just the visual comical antics of the monkey king, you know, I mean, I was eight years old and I was, uh, you know, you know, so, but of okay. course it's deeper as one get, grows old. And so but you, you, you are good because- after But thank you. you. Yeah, you read us a, a children book and you still continue pursue. But I find out a lot of situation is um, after you read it and then you don't continue to read when you are a dog because you think you already yeah. know. And then you can, but then you can see all the different, how it applies to you in that age as opposed to when you were a kid, you know, so yeah. certainly it, it does, it's interesting. Yeah, no doubt but, that's, but, that's uh, a good novel. You know, thank I still keep it in my bookshelf and then I've been reading for many, many years and I still um, open a page and I can read a chapter on that. And it's quite interesting, you know, and kind of like mm -hmm. the feeling like a playing computer game because uh, we have an Olga. Yeah, uh, no, Olga. I know. Okay, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello. Yeah, Olga, please. Okay, so I uh, kind of um, wondering, uh, for example, Greeks, uh, they um, uh, thought that it's not like person by um, itself writing all these mythology stories and um, it's like muses uh, goddesses come to uh, him and give them him this ability to write it. Is the in Chinese philosophy um, um, something like this? It's like uh, there is some kind of powers that come to person and help um, to write something, and it's not like. Um, imaginary, but have some kind of divine intervention. This is the in Chinese culture, something like this, or it just writer writing uh, fiction and from his imagination and that's it. So you have a question or that's your comment about the divine? No, it's a it's question. Is there in, in, for example, Greeks, they can consider that users come to them and help them to put them in particular condition and help them to write these stories. And, um, but it's in, in the Bible, they thought that it's like um, dictated by God, but is there in uh, Chinese culture, what they think there is, there was divine intervention, some kind of um, help uh, but, or it just writer writing by itself from his imagination and that's it. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I got your question. So uh, it's a very different concept when you talk about divine intervention, uh, uh, that you can see the Chinese God, especially in this movie and in this uh, uh, novel, is not as powerful as the Judaism God, right? So the God between them, they still have more like a Greek God, okay? So that's the thing. And then if you see the whole story, a little bit like Odyssey or Iliad, right? So the God will kind of intervene, okay? In this journal, they want the people to do something and uh, in this, Chapter I show it doesn't have the Buddhist strava intervene, but a lot of time you have the Buddhist strava intervene, try to help, and then so on. This one is in this sense is very similar to Greek mythology, but uh, not like uh, in the biblical story. The God is all powerful and everything. That that's the the difference. But my question also. That, for example, in Greek mythology, in Greek uh, culture, they consider it's not a writer, a writer uh, doing it by himself, but muses come to him, muses goddesses come to him and help him to write it. Yeah. So it's not like from his imagination, but from like 
uh, divine intervention of muses. There was three muses that helped to uh, people like um, to write all this. But is in Chinese culture that's uh, it's someone help you to write it, some kind of influence, or it's just writer writing it from his imagination and that's it. Like yeah, yeah. to I get see, to think, today uh, they oh, write uh, I think, uh, fiction. Sorry, Olga. I think what Olga uh, is saying Olga. is whether this writing was inspired by a divine in being or whether it was just by human observation. And oh, gotcha. yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yeah, thank, thank you for this. Okay. Thank you for this. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah. I think it's by 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 imagination. Okay. And then it's not this person, the author's imagination. It remember the actual story has been a thousand years ago, <laughs> so they already have a lot of uh, story talk about this. And for example, the Monkey King. Where does the Monkey King come from? So somebody said that because it's a, a, a person, okay, in the Kucha who helped uh, the monk. And then somebody said it could be from the uh, Hinduism, Ramayana, they have the monkey king, okay. So that probably the prototype. No. So uh, we don't know, but uh, the, 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 this one, uh, I, if I have to answer, I will say there's no divine no music, okay, involved to tell the story, but it's connection of uh, uh, a, a story and they, they also just compile everything together. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Would I maybe to add something? Yeah, please. Uh, to answer to Olga in Chinese mm -hmm. culture, there are specific uh, circumstances where a Taoist master, for example, will say that he received uh, the, a kind of spiritual guidance by a spirit. Okay, for example, if you look at the Changqing, uh, Shangqing school of Taoism <laughs> of the fifth century, uh, many of the writers of that school will say that they got not divine but spiritual guidance from a master from the beyond. Okay. Uh, so uh, that, that kind of thing is possible. And there's a very deep Chinese belief, uh, maybe three, four thousand years old, that when you take a divination from the Yi Ching, uh, if you are truly respectful and uh, sincere in your endeavor, uh, a, a spirit will come and guide the answer in the creation of the hexagram. So that kind of uh, uh, divine or spiritual contact of the beyond and uh, the ordinary earthly dimension exists in Chinese culture. Okay, right. thanks. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. And then I hope uh, today we provide a, a good information. I just put in the yeah. chat, and next week has no meeting, and the week after we're going to talk about Confucianism uh, in the Tang Dynasty. So we're going to the seventh uh, century uh, during that time. And the reason it's important is you today, if you pay attention, you probably will see the society. It is reflect the society, imaginary society, in 16th century, and this kind of Confucian Confucian. Uh, 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 bu bureaucratic system is gradually built over the last thousand years and started from Tang. Okay, so the Tang Confucian start to re react against the Buddhism and start to build more rigid uh, Confucian system. So okay, so the, we are going back uh, two weeks from now talk about the Confucianism in the Tang Dynasty. Dynasty, and that's the starting of the Neo Confucianism, okay, and mature in Song and the Ming Dynasty. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and Thank sorry. You. The next Have a good week. week. Have a good two Great weeks. Job. Thank you, Jason. Thank, Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good. That was a good session. Thanks, everyone, for not trolling too much.
Yeah, DOJ, you keep awake. Thank you. And uh, keep yeah. everybody safe. And uh, we that's Are almost the first time we have no bomber. That's great. No, we had lots of bombers, Jason. I was working really hard for the first 15 oh, minutes. Thank you. There's lots, <laughs> yeah. They All just right. didn't Thanks. get through, man. I was I was on it. Yeah, that's why I feel so safe, you know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we had a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. Cool home for the for this meetup. So <laughs> actually, Madeline was helpful because she was getting messages from the trolls. So she was saying, "I just got this message, so it was like really handy." Okay, thank you, anyone, and see you in two weeks. Yeah, ciao.